Hello, good evening, welcome to Easy 8's Online Painting Club. My name's Danny, it says it right down there. I made a boo-boo. Did you see that at the beginning? It says it's a product review. It's, it's not a product review. I didn't change it from when the last time I was online. Today's the Online Painting Club. <clears throat> Every Friday we get together, we come online. Join in over there on the live chat. I feel quite embarrassed. I didn't change it. We come online and we paint our models together. That's what this is all about. For the next two hours, we're going to be here together painting our collections because, let's be honest, they all need painting and we haven't gone and done that because we're all quite lazy. I've, well, I'm lazy. You might not be. Um, but I'm grateful for your company. We've got some people coming along already. We've got Stafford. We've got Kez. We've got Jeff. And we've got Adrian so far. Thanks very much for coming along, guys. Nice to see you. It's not a product review. Stupid, stupid. Um, so, just in case you were wondering, <coughs> the other day, just um, like over the weekend, I did a quick product review. I say quick, it was about half an hour. It's always live. Live stream is what we do here. Um, and I was talking about some terrain boards uh, by Animalia. Or Animalia Games, Animalia Originals. Um, and that's why it still says product review. I just didn't change it. Sorry about that. So I just tried to change it at the last second. Um, anyway, I hope that my signal is coming through nice and clear. I can see that my picture is a little bit jumpy just at this end here. I don't know why that is. There might be like something happening in the background. I have checked my PC over um, and I apologise for being just a little bit late. I had a very, very important phone call just before I came online, uh, which I called short. It was, it was absolutely fine, uh, but it just kind of knocked me over a little bit. Anyway, I hope you guys are all well. I hope you guys have been doing some uh, cool painting over the week if you've had time. If not, that's what this little two hour slot is for. Um, last week I sort of finished, I say sort of finished, I finished my two little 50mm Churchill gun carriers um, and while I wasn't entirely 100% happy with the result, they are effectively done, they, they are good. The reason I don't think that they are very good is that because the majority of those models is, is metal and I don't like metal and as if you watched last week's episode you'll see that as I was handling them and moving them it's very easy to rub that paint off so in a few spots on underneath the tracks I'm seeing it now there's just a few spots of like metal coming through and despite me you know umming and ahhing over what colour is going to do the tracks I think I might do them again nice and quickly just a little bit lighter and that will offer, you know, offer me the opportunity to put more um, you know just more paint on them to cover up those metal bits on there as well Jeff says as Jeff it's a bit very weird calling you Jeff I, every week I say this but it's my dad hi dad picture's fine great cool it's just my monitor then it is a jippy monitor um, so anyway I've finished those models it's great I rarely finish anything on the show uh, or ever so yeah for me I finished some things and uh, this week I'm going to be painting some little chaffies I was looking for my little box of tanks a minute ago I couldn't quite find found them cool um, the chaffy is it really interesting tank from World War two I really like it I think it's if you can call a tank cute I think it's really cute um, when we, me and the community, the Easy 8 community, went down to Bovington Tank Museum, um, there was one parked in the car park. I was like, I like that. It's really cool. So as a Christmas present, or was it a birthday? It was a birthday present I got just at the end of last year from my dad and my stepmom. I got a couple of little chaffies and I got a little Hellcat. I haven't made the Hellcat yet, but the, um, the chaffy was made to replace the um, M3 and M5 Stuart, which is a light tank. Um, the, 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 it was it was just a natural progression through the war. Something eventually was going to take its its role. The Stuart still remained in service and probably still does somewhere in the world. But the Chaffees is just a completely different tank. Still fills that role as a reconnaissance or a scout tank. And I just think they're really cool. I've got two of them that I'm going to paint up in US drab colours today. I would love to know what it is that you are painting this evening. This evening, if you are painting something, do let me know. Drop it in over the live chat over there with these cool guys. Stick it down there in the comments. I genuinely do read everything. Um, uh, or if you want to, you can catch us over at Facebook. You can catch us on Instagram, which I have to admit I haven't been on the upkeep on that very much lately. Or you can kind of drop it in over at Discord at the Easy Eight After Party, where very often I will come on for at least an hour at the end of a show and talk to you, talk to you guys directly um, through video chat or microphone or something like just typing if you want to. Um, today, however, I will not be online at the end of the show. Um, I've been very busy at work. I've not seen much of my partner <clears throat> and we were looking forward to just, you know, having a glass of wine or something together later on. So um, you've got to look after the things that look after you, haven't you? This, it's the way it goes. Uh, Kez says, I am working on my Clan Wolf Beta Company mechs. That's right, because I believe recently you also finished. You kind of like got to a milestone, didn't you, in your, um, in, in, in your mech collection. 
Well, that sign just went up. I just saw it in the corner of my eye. Adrian says, still working on the angry one. Very excited to see about that. Show me your progress. If you want to put pictures of your stuff up, you can stick them on Discord. <laughs> you can stick them on Facebook. I've moved this one a little bit long because the new microphone's in there. <laughs> um, you can stick it on Facebook. Um, if you want to, you, to put them on Facebook, you've got to actually put it on the listing for this week's show as a comment. Nice and simple. But we can all see what it is that you're painting. Uh, you guys have been doing some wonderful works recently. Anyway, if you like what we do here at Easy8, please, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you are considering it, please follow through and push that subscribe button. We've recently had a couple more subscribers. I'm proud to announce that we're up to this, uh, the, the very, very um, wonderful sum of 85. That is fantastic. And every time I get a little influx of subscribers, I always have to say that I never dreamt of having more than just a few because I started off as just being something for friends. But to know that the community is, is worthwhile to people and, and it's growing is... Uh, is really humbling. So thank you very much for subscribing. I hope you find um, something here that is, is of worth to you. Maybe it's motivation, hopefully it's inspiration, that would be lovely. But of course just somewhere to comfortably paint your models, knowing that someone else is struggling. Because <laughs> I do struggle and the struggle is real. Anyway, yeah, if you like, you can also hit that bell icon. I rarely uh, do little surprise live shows, but sometimes I do and I'd like to do more of them. Um, but I don't always put schedules up for them, only for the online painting club. Uh, so I might surprise you. And if you want to keep up to date with those things, if you hit that bell icon, you will get an alert on whatever device, you, device you've set it on. Uh, you go like, oh my god, easy, it's coming online. And you can come and see me. And I'll be doing some cool stuff. Anyway, that's enough of that. Subscribe, please. Thank you. Anyway, let's head on over to the workbench and see what I've got going on over here. Here we are. A couple of little chappies. So... In the weekend, I was doing um, a thing on a big terrain board, so I'm actually zoomed out a little bit more today than what I normally am. If you don't like that, let me know, and I will zoom in a little bit for you if you wish. Um, I just thought maybe maybe you prefer it this way, so I thought I'd give it a go. Anyway, two little chaffies. Uh, they are very little. Uh, this is a Sherman, um, which is unpainted also, so you can see the size of it. So. Yeah, they're, they're just they're just a cool tank, man. They're supposed to be really, really fast. They've got quite a bit more armor than the standard um, Stuart or the Honey tank. And today I'm going to be doing these up in um, US drab colors. They are, I forget where these ones came from. These, oh, that's right. If I remember rightly, these ones, and I, and I don't think I want to know because it was a it was a birthday present but these particular models um, came in a, in a flat pack cardboard box with a little bit of um, uh, bubble wrap in there so I don't actually know the, the manufacturer uh, they they look like Zvezda but they Zvezda um, popped together um, these ones didn't they actually were glued together um, there are lots of different brands out there they're just they're just really nice little models I like them they've got very very light turrets um, with a pokey little stem in there um, some models they do fall off a little bit easier than others. Uh, this Matilda here, for example, really tight um, uh, turret on there. That one, that's not a Zvezda. I did have, I got a Lee, which I think is a Zvezda model, and that is an incredibly tight turret on there. Uh, so sometimes you need to put a little bit of sandpaper inside the socket just to kind of give it a bit of a twist, um, just to kind of give it a little bit of, um, or less friction really. These ones could probably do with a little bit of friction, but that might happen when I paint them. So I'm just going to make sure that I cleaned up my airbrush because it seems to have seized up a little bit. Even if I do clean it, sometimes what happens is there's like a little bit of varnish residue inside, and that's enough to kind of hold the uh, the needle in place. Um, so often what I do is I just unscrew that little bit there, which clamps the needle in place, and then I just force the needle back. Probably does need that little bit of a clean, which is absolutely fine. I did flush it through and give it a, you know, a, a bit of a clean, but probably not the most thorough one that I should have done. See, the needle's looking pretty pristine in here, but there's a little bit of residue on the end there, and that's, that dries almost like PVA glue on the end. Can you see that there? I wasn't, I didn't notice that when I was cleaning up the last time. Pull them all the way out, there's a tiny bit of residue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get a little bit of cleaner. Um, here we go, just a little bit of neat cleaner in my little pot there. And um, I'm just gonna put it on my brush, and I'll just brush it down. There we go. Uh, Jeff says they came from a uh, from a comp that uh, break the big FOW boxes. Don't know what you're talking about. It came from a, oh from a company that breaks open the big 
Flames of War boxes. Do you know what? I think I was just being really slow there. It's been a really, really long day of work. I've literally just come home. My partner made me some food because she's lovely and amazing. Um, and then I literally came up here and threw my shirt on and got started. Um, and I've been at work since uh, quarter to seven this morning and it has been non-stop. Um, I love my job, but today was, or well, the last couple of days have been a bit taxing. So um, if my brain is just <laughs> struggling to just kind of boot up or catch up, uh, I, I apologize. I understand. So it comes from a company who, who buy the Flames of War boxes, break them down because they do sell like big multi-pack boxes, don't they? Um, and then they, uh, they sell them on individually. So that's cool. Thanks for letting me know, but without actually letting me know. Well played. So this cleaner that you use in an airbrush is like, it's, it's basically um, uh, like this, it's like isopropyl alcohol, IPA, and not the Indian pale ale of course, um, with, a, with its own special ingredient, whatever manufacturer decides they need to put in there. But if you're using IPA, it's essentially the same thing. Now I use um, IPA alcohol, IPA alcohol. I use alcohol to strip my miniatures down if I don't like paint jobs on them. Um, I've, I've tried various products over the years. One of my product reviews is actually of a um, of a green stuff well paint remover. And while it does a very good job, you might as well just buy the alcohol because it means you can put it through your airbrush as well. Um, don't drink it though, obviously. But when it comes to the airbrush, I will. I think I'll always buy airbrush cleaner because I don't. I don't know. I I don't know enough to, to be comfortable with that choice. If if I if I bought just alcohol put it through the airbrush, is is that going to be okay, or does it need to have that special hidden you know ingredient, whatever it is that goes into an airbrush cleaner? Is is it enough? I don't. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. Right. Pop the needle back in there. I feel it is a little bit dirty still inside, but. I'm hoping it's going to be okay for now. Pull that back aside. I'm going to put the nozzle in there, and I will put a, a, just a couple of drops in 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 there. That should hopefully um, keep everything moving. Or it's going to be easy. Eight. Watch Danny clean an airbrush thing again, isn't it? Screw the racket on first. Here we go. Push that needle in. There we go. I put a couple of drops in there. got a little bit of a leak in my compressor as well which is a little bit annoying so it's constantly topping up I don't know if you can hear it in the background with my new um, my new microphone it picks up quite a few things around in, in the local area and um, it would just keeps on refilling and if I take my headset off I can hear it go so I've smeared a load of blue tack into where I think the uh, leak is coming out but I think I might actually need to do some engineering down there see what happens um, some comments going in. Um, company that breaks up the big flames of war box. I've got it, yeah. I use alcohol to survive the week. Alcohol rules. I don't know how comfortable I am promoting that as an idea. Um, but I could say that sometimes I partake in alcohol to end a day. <laughs> uh, the struggle is real. <clears throat> I've recently stopped drinking beer because I was drinking a bit too much and I barely fit into my black shirt anymore. Connoisseurs of the show might have noticed. <laughs> um, care what you like. Just care how comfortable the shirt fits. <laughs> okay, I'll just a drop in there because I can see that I didn't do a very good job of cleaning there either. And we're almost good to go. Yeah, that light is really ticky. You know, it's an £8 box light. What do you expect? It's never really worked since the day I put it up. Took it partly a while ago. I was like, right, now it's working. Put it up. Stop working. Oh, you can't win. You can't. Okay. I'm ready to give this olive drab game a go. So, what I'm going to be using today is... Over this drawer over here. Olive Drab Modulation Set from AK Interactive. I love AK's paints and Ammo Mig's paints. 
they're just such a wonderful consistency. They really are a professional, you know, provider of paints, and they're, and they're really just a, above the rest. The modulation set itself is probably a little bit overkill for such a tiny, teeny little tank. Um, less is more when it comes to these little things, but there is a really nice selection of colours. And one of the things that I've mentioned in the listing today is that uh, I would normally use the, the olive drab base here. You can see these different colours down there. I'll bring it up a bit closer for you. You can see the different names there. The idea is that you set one as, a, as your base colour, work down the sh shadows, work your way back up to some highlights. Um, but one is your kind of like dominating or commanding sort of colour, if you like. When it comes to the smaller ones, the science behind this company's paints is that the I hope that you can hear me now. I don't know what happened there. Maybe there's just a little bit of a spike. Maybe my computer was doing something in the background. Can you all hear me now? Let me know if you can hear me. I don't know how long, how long I've not been able to be heard, but I realized that the equalizer had just frozen. How peculiar, how weird. Hopefully that's not something that's gonna persist. I can see that the equalizer is moving now. Let me know if you can hear me. Yeah, you can hear me. I'm so sorry about that. How weird. That's something that's never happened before. My apologies. Um, tell me the last thing that you remember me saying. Yeah, he's back. Sorry about that. I don't, I don't know what happened there. Crazy, crazy. Right. Basically, what I was about to say is I'm about to waz the paint on the Easy 8 Wazomatic. So, uh, yeah. Let me know the last thing that you remember, just the paint colour talk. Was that the bit when I was talking about pointing on the boxes? Cool. So there's the light drab. If I did the olive, just the standard olive, you'll see the difference between the two. Olive drab. Was a magic. Yeah, okay, cool. I might put it back to the other microphone in a minute and see what happens and see if it happens again. My apologies for that, it's a little bit uh, unprofessional, but you know, it's a, it's a new setup, it's probably going to have its teething issues or whatever. My apologies. Anyway, what I was saying is that the, the modulation set of paints, the idea is that you have a set colour, like your, your standard base colour, you spray down to, to shadows, you spray up to highlights, so you've got a range, but they are all the same hue, just different luminosities essentially. Um, what I normally do is I start off with a base, uh, the, the standard base, but with the, light, the smaller vehicles I go with the lighter one because all these paints are formulated to be uh, scientifically formulated for the fact that as the scale or the size decreases the lighter it should be. It's only fractional uh, but there is some proper science in it. I read about it, it was boring but interesting at the same time. Um, 
So yeah, normally I'd paint olive base for like a 135th model or even a 28mm, but these guys, I just like to do them in light base. So that's what these guys are going to be painted in today. I'm going to do one at a time. I prefer my tanks with a closed hatch, but because I've got two, I have one with a hatch open, so you can see. <clears throat> What I'll do is I'll get painting on this one here and I'll get I'll go back to the other microphone in a minute. Unfortunately, it's a, it is quite a few clicks um, to set up a new mic uh, or to bring the other mic in. So it's not a quick swap over, unfortunately. You will notice that I've got a new painting sheet for spraying on. The other one was getting a lot of texture that was rubbing paints off. And I put my brand on it today. Um, I was wondering if it was going to like bleach the, the, the camera out with the lights, but it seems to be holding well. It's going to last 10 minutes before I spray all over it, right? <laughs> Cool. Let's make sure that that little lump of dry paint doesn't fall into the hopper of my airbrush. Just pop that over there. Please get off my finger. Thank you very much. Um, and now I'm just going to put an amount in here. Cool. I'm not going to add any thinner or anything like that because I really like these paints. I know them quite well and I feel that I don't need to thin them. So, yay. So I'm going to start with the hull first. And I'm just going to spray down here. Now, I don't really bother putting primer on these teeny tiny models with um, that, that are made of plastic. I put primer on the Churchills because they were made of resin and they were made of metal. Um, and I know that that goes a long way to, you know, holding that paint in. Um, where, where is your Hellcat? Good question. Haven't made it yet. When I made these ones, I stopped to do something else. And then it's still in the box down there. I, I aim to have it made over this week. Um, they're actually quite fiddly and they take quite a few hours to build. Because I like to sand all the edges down and make sure that they fit well. So, yeah, there. That. Anyway, got a good spray from the airbrush already. Now... Another thing about not priming these is that because of the colour of the plastic is designed to sort of match the, 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 the nation's colours, um, is it actually does a pretty good job of just providing that background colour. So, yeah. I'm going to do both tanks at the same time because that went on really well. So, here's the second hull. Um, the Hellcat, I believe, has the same hull. Or does it? Anyway, cool. I have a tank destroyer that has the same hull and it has an open topped um, an open topped turret. I think it is the Hellcat, it is, isn't it? We called it the Hellcat when we were talking about it. So actually the uh, the unpainted part on this is, is closer to the standard olive colour and you can see here that they're actually getting quite light. Bring my lights in a little bit, it seems to um, be quite dull on my screen. Probably because I've got the camera further away, so the, the, the light balance is different. I thought I'd mix it up a little bit. Maybe maybe it's not working. Let me know if you if you like the camera being this far away. I need, I need to know. It's, it's for you. I can see it with my, my naked eye right here um, quite well. So the cameras are for you. Let me know what you think. Would you like me to go back to it being the other way? I'm, not, I'm actually physically further away as well rather than just being zoomed out further. So let me know. Now I'm going to bring the turrets in. Um, I'm concerned about them blowing away because they're actually really quite light. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my big clampy tweezers that I got here. Um, that John Takax from Out of This World Models and Minis suggests that I buy. Um, and these are quite... I found my old ones the other day, which I've now moved and can't see where they are. Um, but I quite like these ones. They're, they're really quite big. They've got like a, a big surface area for big clumsy fingers. Um, quite Quite comfortable to hold. So all I'm going to do is just literally pop the little stem bit just in there. And then I can hold him like that. Here we go. <coughs> and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to put it down. <laughs> Make sure that I get underneath, but I'll come back for another pass later on and I'll just hold it from the sides and just make sure that it's not under the turret ring it's more under the, the, the back of the turret box in there that I want to get in for cool how am I going to put this down maybe I'll just put him down on the paper and just do that will that will that work get off 
<laughs> Get... Oh! Yeah! That was painful, wasn't it? Um, so, more people coming in. <laughs> Staff says, I'm leaking. Ouch! That sounds like you've cut yourself while you're doing some modelling there. Please look after yourself whilst on my show. <laughs> that would be great. Uh, Scallion TV, evening or late to the party. Sorry. Hi, Scallion TV. Not seen your name before in the live chat. Welcome to the show. If you are new, um, thanks for coming along. If you're not new, maybe you've just been watching in the background. Welcome to the show. I hope you find something worthy here for you to entertain yourself while you're painting. Don't worry about being late. It's all on YouTube. You can go back to it if you want to. It's just nice to see you coming along. So thanks very much for joining. If you're painting something this evening, scanning and TV, please let me know. I'm genuinely interested in what it is that you're doing. You keep me company, guys, while I paint my stuff. This time I decided to hold it slightly differently so I can get in at the box thing here. Going in quite heavy with the airbrush, maybe I just need to dial that back a little bit. About 15 millimeter. Who cares? Right. This is going really well, isn't it? New people coming along and stuff. Hey Dad, I'm famous. <laughs> Staff says, somehow managed to cut my thumb with a file. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing at you live on the internet. <laughs> that sounds daft. I hope you're okay, mate. Don't do not do that. It's awful. Scallion says, uh, tonight I'm gluing 15mm grenadiers to 5p coins. Cool. 50mm. Yeah. I love 15mm. You could just have so many in just one little box. It's great. Right. Put this down, Danny. Put it down. I'm making a right faff of this. I thought it was going to be easy. There we go. It, it looked harder than what it was, but it was still pretty difficult, to be fair. Right. These guys are looking almost dry, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give them a bit of a blast with some cold air. Hopefully not going to blow the turrets all over the place. The, th the thing I really like about this paint, and I forget about it until I use it, on a plastic miniature, the Churchills being resin uh, and, and metal, that they don't have the same quality. The finish on these models is incredible. When you start spraying with the airbrush, that it's just such a, a silky, satin smooth matte finish. It's just they look really nice. And I'm gonna ruin it all by putting a, a wash all over them in a minute. Just hitting that one there with a little bit more on the side because he looked like he needed a bit more colour. There we go, cool. Again, I'll just blast it with some cold air. Just try and accelerate the drying process of all of that. Hopefully my mic is still working because um, I'm nervous now that it's not working again. Um, I was really, I really wanted the microphone to work. It worked when I did the product review on the weekend. It's really clear. Kez came online the day before and it helped me do the sound setup and everything. And um, it was it was really cool. But uh, clearly it froze. I just wonder if like, my computer was just doing something in the background, like, um, I, you, oh, I don't know. Do you remember I said that the screen was being a bit jumpy in my head? Maybe there's something going on. Maybe it's just a one-off. I hope it's not going to cause us further problems. I'll switch it back in a bit and see if it's see if it's actually decided to start working. The sound quality is better and it makes me sound more professional. And I've had this one for years now on this show. It's about time I got something better, wasn't it? Uh, Scallion TV says airbrush cleaner feels a bit more slippery than IPA. It could have some sort of it could have some sort of lubricant in it as well as a degreaser. Yeah, that's a very good point. I've never actually compared the two. It was just something someone said to me, he said, I, I think they're very, very similar. And I thought, well, they they seem that way, I suppose. They do the same sort of job very quickly. But, uh, yeah, th that's one of the reasons why I haven't put anything like IPA in my... that I regularly use in my airbrush, because I thought that there must be some sort of ingredient or product in cleaner. That's good for your airbrush, right? That's just why they do it. It's not just about marketing something and trying to retain customers. Or is it? <laughs> I mean, maybe it is. It's a capitalist world out there, man. Cool. Quite a bit heavy there, painting my fingers. Just a bit more cold air on that one, just, just give a bit of a blow dry. There we go. Wonderful. Turn it over. Like a little tortoise. 
I really like the wheels on the chaffees. They just look really cool. But I do think that the bogey system, you know, of the of the M3 Lee and you know the M4 Shermans and things. I just think those bogey systems are just super iconic, aren't they? Like if you if you think of a, a tank, that's well, as a kid, that's probably what you're thinking of. Probably. That being said, of course, the show Easy 8 is named after the Sherman Easy 8, or the E8, which has a completely different bogey system. Um, and if you want to know what that looks like, it is the um, Fury tank. Um, I didn't name the show after Fury. I just like the way that Easy 8 sounded. Um, hi, Dave. Thanks for coming along, mate. How you doing? <clears throat> I've hit that with too much paint, so I'm just going to put those over there, let those dry naturally for a second. And now I'm going to come back to my turrets, and I'm just going to give them a bit of a spray on the underside, because you can see where my tweezers were. Cool. And this one here. Lovely. What I wanted to do is, if I was going to get through these quite quickly today, is I was going to have a little look at my um, my little honey tanks. I love honey tanks. They're probably one of my favourites. And just off beside me here, I've got a 135th build that I've been painting off secretly on the side. One of the reasons why I don't get an awful lot done is because I'm always painting something different. Here is um, a Sherman, just a, a standard 76mm Sherman um, that I painted in these colours a long time ago. It's a little bit dusty um, and this, this one will always appear a little bit different because he was painted with enamel paints. Um, to, like, all, the, all the weathering, because I started doing 135th models and I really enjoyed them and I really like going going to town on all the um, all the all the the colours that you can do with weathering techniques and staining techniques and things like that. Um, and I start doing it on my on my 15 millimeter models, and it takes just as long to do a 15 millimeter model that, as it does with a 135th millimeter uh, 135th model. So I stopped doing that, and I just used Citadel washes on them, and that was enough with a little bit of a dry brush. So these ones will look different, but it's okay for all your tanks to look different, right? Here is a little honey tank. Uh, which I have given like a bit of an undercoat or a bit of a you know a base coat and, and I do actually have two of them um, I've also got a, a Lee that's quite a quite a sizable tank I never thought that the Lee was a really big tank but it's it's, it's got some size when you go to the tank museum I, mean, I say the tank museum but you could be any old tank museum but I go to the one in Dorset um, it, it's got such a presence it's really really tall it's quite a thing to stand in front of it, it's enormous um, even if it was a death trap <laughs> um, uh, I believe that Jeff could tell you what it was nicknamed by the Soviets in World War II um, basically when the Lee first came into service it rather than being welded together it was one of the reasons that they learned to weld their hulls together um, is it was just um, covered in rivets big fat rivets when an impact hits them from like a shell on the outside um it pierces that that rivet and sends it straight in like high velocity on the piercing round and it just turns you know but they all, they all of them do it in that impact area and then basically you just have a load of high speed bullets that just kill maim and destroy everything inside um and uh oh yeah Stafford says it where seven brothers die that's um that's that's horrific staff's going quiet it must still be bleeding <laughs> sorry mate i hope you're all right um yeah so big big old tank anyway little stewards here that just to go along with my chappies i just i just love them if i if i won the lottery or if eza ever made it big time i would i'd buy one of those and i'd drive to work in it and then I wouldn't go to work because I'd won the lottery. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Jeff's saying the same thing, where, where seven brothers die of blood loss from a cut thumb with a file. Yeah. Okay, back to the tanks here. I just put a bit too much on the bottom there, so I just wanted to let them sit for a second. Again, going to hit them with a bit of cold air from the airbrush. Can, can everybody see everything on the monitor? Okay, on my monitor, which you've already established, is a really rubbish monitor um, but it looks really dark um, and I just want to make sure that everyone can see what it is that I'm doing clearly I've made a few changes this week and um, I don't know if they're beneficial so let me know if it doesn't look right if it's if it's too dark 
normally I'm, I'm actually physically zoomed in much closer I can do that it's gonna look clumsy on the show I don't want to and um, I can certainly set it up for next week you let me know literally watching paint dry thanks for tuning in <laughs> hit that bell icon and I'll let you know when I'm doing something really mundane cool so <laughs> I'm just gonna get the side of the bogey systems in here because there's a, there's a lot of you know business going on in there um, so yeah this one here um, has uh, side skirts this one here doesn't I wanted one with one without so yeah I don't know if they always had them didn't have, always have them I just quite like the the exposed rollers on them so if I hold it here you can see it's got exposed rollers and this one here has side skirts um, I just like things to look a little bit different sometimes But this is where like the Easy Eight community now goes. Ah, oh, Chuffy's always had the side skirts on. Like, ah, oh, well, then I'll have to go and put them on there, won't I? If it's science fiction or fantasy, I can get away with what I want to do. But if it's historical accuracy, then I feel obliged. <laughs> For example. I was painting my 135th honey tank the other day. I sent a picture of it to my dad, Jeff. He said, nah, colour scheme didn't exist. Oh, okay, I'll go, I'll go back and start again. Um, so it's sitting on the side waiting to be started again because, yeah, well, you know, best intentions and all that, right? Um, cool. Back to the turrets. Just going to make sure that these guys have got a good covering. So. Once again, I'm going to go back to the, the clampy tweezers and just give them another quick pass. John, if you're watching this, I know you're stateside, so you're probably not watching it right now. Um, but if you're watching this, uh, these were a really good shout. Thank you so much for forcing me to go and get them. And he did force me as well. It was all awful. It was terrible behavior on John's part. Awful, John. Cool. I'll probably put a bit too much paint in there. If anyone wants to see anything what John paints, he's got his own channel called Out of This World Models and Minis over on YouTube. There's a link down at the bottom in the description of this video. Uh, John has always been a staunch um, supporter of easy eight so i will always maintain my support of him and his channel and he's super cool and he's super nice um, and he's a really good painter and he just paints whatever he wants um maybe he finds it a bit difficult to play lots of games and stuff um so he just kind of chills out paints what he wants to paint and takes videos of them when he's doing it and lately he's been painting uh, or he's been making um a renegade imperial knight from warhammer 40,000. Um, he's been doing a lot of like, you know, just bits work on it and just kind of like, you know, putting random stuff on there and sculpting and stuff. And it's looking absolutely brilliant. Um, and I remember the, the last post he put up on YouTube was um, when you start sculpting with green stuff, sometimes you just, you can't stop and it becomes a bit of an addiction. <laughs> but it is looking killer. You should definitely go and check him out. He's just a super nice guy. Go show him some love and hit that subscribe button on that, that channel. But not before you do it here. Now, now. Favoritism. Cool. Let's put this down here. There we go. Cool. I think the turrets are pretty much done with their base coat. Um, so they can just sit there and dry for a second. Uh, I'm just going to do the other sides of the bogies on these bad boys. Um, and I will probably start washing. Let's make sure that the insides of the bogies are done there as well. It's a little blind spot for me sometimes.
Lovely. Cool. Um, I've got a little bit of paint left over in my hopper, so I'm just wondering, do these little honey tanks need a bit of a go? No. Do you know what? What I've even done is oh, actually I've even really sloppily painted the tracks underneath them. They're nowhere near ready. I was having clearly a, a neurodivergent day that day where I didn't know what I was doing with my life. Um, <laughs> Staff says, but he doesn't like Marmite. You are correct. John doesn't like Marmite. That was a great challenge, and I've actually got to pull my finger out with the um, the latest challenge that I want to do with John. For those of you that uh, that don't know, uh, John and I um, set a really good challenge with each other across our channels. Um, well, I set him a challenge. I was talking about Marmite. I was talking about... Let's set the story here. I was talking about that uh, demolding tool by Games Workshop, or Citadel more, more accurately, this tool. Uh, I bought this because some people at work, they also play Warhammer, and they were talking about this model and they said they really liked it. So I thought, do you know what? I'll give it a go. It's quite an expensive thing for the simplicity of what it is. Uh, it's the tool I always wish I had. I can't live without it. It's amazing. It It's so... It does exactly what a scalpel would do, like the blunt of the scalpel, but it does it in a way that doesn't dig into the plastic. It works for me, but it doesn't always work for everybody. So I said, it's a bit like Marmite. You either hate it or you love it. So I said to John, being that he's you know over in the States, um, I challenge you to this because Marmite is a hate it or love it kind of a thing. Um, so he was able to get hold of some on Amazon, funnily enough, and I told him how to make it on toast, not to put on too much because it can be very strong. Um, and he did a he did a little show at the end of one of his videos. Go and check it out; it's so funny. Um, well, we've already said he he, he doesn't like Marmite. Um, so yeah, thanks for doing that, John. It was great. Uh, Jeff says uh, you want to see the 1965 film, The Battle of the Bulge. Tons of chappies in it. They were supposed to be Shermans and M47 patterns for King Tigers. It's weird how like back in those old films that we thought we could just get away with putting whatever we wanted in there and calling it something else. It's like it's like putting a submarine and go nice aeroplane. It's just it's just weird, isn't it? Um, as a child, I never knew the difference, but um, as, a, as an adult now, I go like, well, that's just a bit stupid. It's not even naughty, it's just stupid. Um, but the films are still good, right? I can't remember that film. I, I know of the film, The Battle of the Bulge, but I can't remember it. I like it. Is it a bridge too, bridge too far? Bridge over the River Kwai. Um, with the surrender scene. Sorry, we don't have the facilities. I thought it was very funny. Anyway, cool. Um, I'm going to get rid of my paint here because I've come to the end of my painting little bit here. What am I going to do with this? Am I just going to... I'm just going to spray it on a piece of paper, right? That's what I'm going to do. I've still got my other piece of paper. Here it is. So I'm just going to... Yeah, there wasn't very much in there, was there? Cool. I thought there'd be a use for that. And keep all your rubbish, right? Right, let me get a little bit of 50-50 um, mix of cleaner and water in here just flush that color through now I'm not gonna go straight in for a wash on them just yet I do want to do a little bit of shadow work on them because I've got the modulation set and I love these um, colors so much I just think they deserve it so I'm gonna wicked Cool. let's pop that over there let's put the light base away I'm keeping an eye on the time it's quarter to eight loads of time yet so light base gonna pop that one away um, let's bring the colors back in I'm going to go for um, I don't want to go olive base I want to go darker I could go dark base or I could go drab shadow I'm gonna have a little look at dark base I want to go too dark too much too too much business going on such a small thing Anyway, give it a shake. It just looks really dark down here, doesn't it? Normally it's really bright white. What if I angle my lights? Is that, is that... Is that... Do I just need to do... Is that, is that better? Just, it just looks dark. You tell me. Now I can't get my hands underneath everything. Right, gonna put this paint on the EZ8 Wasomatic. Give it a good waz. <laughs> I 
I can have to see at the top of the live chat there, Scally TV. Stafford, have you plugged the gap? Have you? Have you plugged the gap? How are you doing? Do we need to call you an ambulance? There, big lumpy bit on the top of that pot there. Cool. You can see that this is considerably darker. Um, and that is what I want. So I'm just going to put let, just a couple of drops in here. There we go. Um, give that a bit of a test. Lovely. I probably could go darker into the shadows. Anyway, here we go. I'm just going to go across the bottoms here. You don't really see the, the bottoms of the tanks in any of the games that I play, but, you know, I know it's there, right? So what I'm doing is I'm doing the whole underside. I'm doing the, the curvy bit that comes up underneath the rear glasses. I'm calling it rear glasses because I don't actually know what it's called. I've got the front glasses. I'm making it up. And I'm going to do... Um, I'm going to spray it a bit of an angle. I'm going to move this one out of the way. I'm going to spray up at a bit of an angle for shadows. In the wheels. And then in a minute I'm going to do highlights going down. Cool. I'll let this one dry for a minute. And I'll come back to this one. Here we go. Out. I should probably put a few more drops in there. Okay, cool. Darren Venomous has joined us. Hi, Darren. Haven't seen you for a little while, mate. I hope you're doing well. How are you keeping? You alright? <laughs> Wasomatic. Super glue is an amazing invention. And it's what it was invented for as well. Um, thank you for the concern. Pleased to say I no longer leak for now. Uh, Jeff is asking Scallion TV, how do you sit and paint 15mm middies? Uh, I did a, a US and a VC army once in 15mm. Drove me mad. second hole done, I'm just going to move him up there, come back to this one, I'm just going to give him a blast of cold air so I can touch him without leaving a fingerprint in him. Uh, Darren says has been very busy making armour. That sounds proper exciting. Gotta stay busy, gotta have armour. bit patchy so I thought I'd give him another go okay now this side again in the bogeys bit of an upwards angle shadow color lovely and we can pop him over there back to the second one and a blast of cold air again so I can just pick him up I think I should have gone to the darker shadow. I just didn't want to like go in too heavy. So what I'm going to do in a minute is I'm going to do this all over again, but sparingly with the dark, darker shadow. My compressor is going crazy in the background over here. Cool, and we'll flip him over onto this side here and do it back. Shadow. Lovely, okay, cool. Right, with the turrets, even though you can't really see it, it's just nice to, isn't it? The whole underside. So, what I'm going to do here is even at underside the cannon turret ring and under the box at the back there call it the box for lack of a better term you know what I mean there we go
there is a noticeable difference, but because you'll barely see it, not really that noticeable. Lovely, cool, brilliant. Um, I've got a little bit of this paint, actually just a tiny, tiny amount in there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna flush him through. Get rid of that on there. You can see it actually it's quite a bit darker on that, on that page. But on those models, it doesn't look all that much different, does it? I'll, uh, I'll flush him through with a bit more 50/50 cleaner water. Oh, there was a blockage and then it sprayed all over my fingers. So I'm going to get my tissue and I'm going to pop them over the top of the hopper. So my airbrush decided that it's not going to play anymore and I have to like clean it out during the intermission. I wanted to sort out my microphone in the intermission. At least I have my purge tank away from all my models when that happened, because that could have sprayed everywhere. How annoying. Maybe just dry on the end of the needle a little bit there. Behave yourself, no need for it. Cool. Um. Uh, Adrian says, you might not be leaking any more staff, but I'm still going to call you an ambulance. So, staff, you're an ambulance. Yeah, that classic old chestnut. Uh, the vehicles are okay in 50mm, but the troops, yeah, do you know what? Um, the, the, uh, some of the models that I've painted do come with troops. Um, for example, these barely touched um, Hornissa. Uh, they have a little crew. Um, they've got a drive. They've got a little drive. Yeah, the driver, a loader, and a. I assume a spotter, a gunner, spotter, commander. Um, I just was playing playing around with these colours just a couple of weeks ago, but those are tiny little 50mm dudes. And then some people even play in like 10mm, don't they? Crazy. Um, large white flashing bloom, only when I'm cold. <laughs> it's getting dark. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, but for how much longer have we got before the break? Just a few minutes, if that. So, what I'm going to do here. Um, so I'm probably going to just let them dry for a minute because I've had a lot of paint on the last half an hour. Um, cool. What we'll do then is we'll, is we'll take a quick break from here. Um, I, I'm going to I'm going to try. I'm going to come back to my microphone in a minute and and see how we get on. In fact, you know what? I'm going to do it now. Um, I'm sorry for the lack of professionalism. I just think it's interesting to give it a go. I kind of got the confidence down now in my in my later years of doing Easy Eight. Back when it when it first started, if something went wrong, I was like, oh my god, I get red in the face and I'd have like a you know a racing heart for hours after the show. But let's see if the uh, let's see if the old mic, sorry, the the new mic is going to work again. Let's let's see what happens. I'm going to go back through all, through all the options, through all the menus. That I, I believe you can't see, um, but let, let's see. I'm going to change it sort of now. That's such a shame. <laughs> Clearly, there, there, something has happened where it's, there's been a conflict. Uh, it froze and, it, and it's not working, is it? Um, I'm going to stay on the gaming mic for now. Uh, I apologise for the slightly tinnier voice. Um, it is a nice microphone. It does work. Something's happened. I will endeavour to sort this out um, over the next few days. In the meantime, let's go and have ourselves a quick 10 minute break. Um, I realised that for the entire show, my cup of tea has been behind me, so I'm probably going to go and make a fresh one. Whatever it is that you're doing, you should probably go and hear <laughs> the sound of silence. You should probably go and change your paint water. I don't care, don't argue with me, just go change it, alright? See you in 10. Bye bye.
Welcome back. I hope you had a good break. I went downstairs to go warm up my cup of tea in the microwave because I'm that kind of a person. My partner knew exactly what time it was. Maybe a hot chocolate. Thanks, mate. Mm. Cheers. Happy Friday. Um, happy St. Patrick's Day, by the way, um, for any of you um, fellow Irish people out there. I say fellow Irish people. I think like somewhere way back there was an Irish person in my family. Um, but and to any of you celebrating, happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, just looking at the comments that were going in just at the end of the break there. Uh, Jeff says, hey, did you know that the Chaffee was made by the Cadillac Company? The things you learn. I didn't know that the uh, Chaffee was actually made by the Cadillac Company, but I, I know that uh, a lot of like car manufacturers were involved in the manufacturing of war things during the war because well they had the the facilities to do so but i didn't know specifically cadillac was the chaffee um, stafford says that way it broke down but yeah says jeff really comfy though well yeah there you go i didn't know that cool um general motors had a lot to do with engines and, and ford as well i believe Did, didn't they am i just making that up i don't know while you were away, what I did is I've just, um, I, I was going to clean up my airbrush, but uh, I, I didn't. It seems to be working okay. Um, I found the shadow colour. I've just hit the shadow over the dark areas I was just doing. I've gone over them with a, with a darker colour. And I was just about to stick a little bit of mid-dark on the back of the engine base. Because like I said last week, I like the engine base to be just a little bit darker. Just to kind of help simulate the, uh, the, the griminess that would have appeared on the back. Also just makes them look kind of cool. Um, if you have just tuned in and you don't know what we're about or you just need a polite reminder if you like what we do here at Easy Gate please do consider liking and subscribing and following us on Facebook and just sharing the name out there but it's the subscribes that really count so if you wouldn't mind please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done that uh, and maybe it's not for you but maybe you know someone out there who needs to be a company painting models or maybe you just know someone who does and think hey they might benefit from having a little social club that's what this is all about so please do spread the word of Easy Eight out there and smash that subscribe button. But just once, just just boop, just push it once. And of course, if you hit the bell icon, then you'll find out if I ever do like a little surprise show, like I did the other day. I did a little product review and then didn't reset product review at the beginning of the show. I made it look pretty cheap, and you should probably never come to Easy Eight. Don't worry about it. It's a rubbish show. Don't don't come. It's, it's a silly place. Silly place. <laughs> um, also, what I've done is I've just repositioned my webcam uh, that looks down. So, because uh, I wasn't liking it and you guys weren't saying anything about it. So I'm going to take you over to the workbench, but I wasn't able to test it. So it could look rubbish. No, it's just outline ever so slightly. <laughs> if I, I will move it here. <laughs> Look how, how much difference that, that is. It's moved about 10 mil closer and now it's all completely bled out. I'm going to have to move the lights away and everything. Oh my goodness. That makes such a difference, doesn't it? Well, there we go. At least we can see some things now. Wonderful. Brilliant. That's crazy how much difference that makes. Look at that. It's, it's literally like this much closer. It's just moved on the hinge. Um, anyway, hot chocolate. Lovely. Just before I could ask, she said to me, it's not got any booze in it. All right, thanks. <laughs> so here's my two chappies. As you can see, the underside is darker than the than the top side. Come into focus. Come into focus. Stop it. Anyway, anyway. Um, yes, so I have a shadow color. I have a light color. Um, the, I've gone back to the, uh, the, the dark base, which is the one between the normal base and the, and the shadow. Um, I don't want it necessarily as dark as this on, on the engine bay at the back. So I'm just going to give it just a little bit of a light spray there. Um, and it also helps kind of create this sort of uh, sort of eye focus thing. When you're looking at the tank head on, I'm going to do a little bit of highlights on the front of the hull over here, especially on the sort of the corners just there, just because it's a nice place to do it. And what I feel that it does for my eye is it, it kind of draws your focus to the front of the tank because that's the business end generally, isn't it? Why are you not focusing? Follow the tank. Follow the tank. <laughs> doesn't want to focus down normally it focuses straight away whatever maybe the autofocus is not set let's uh, uh autofocus is set okay cool everything seems to be going a little bit weird today whatever whatever um cool airbrush just get the last little bit out of there i'm just going to put just a couple of drops don't, I don't need anything more in there than that um, just because there's just these tiny little bits on the back here and I'm going to go quite light with it as well I want it to be quite a subtle effect um, to 
which is why I'm just I'm just kind of going down just one shade, really. Um, what are they saying that it might benefit from a little bit more? <laughs> I ran out already. There we go. I've done the undersides of the turrets too. Um, a build up on the end of the needle. I do. Let's just clean that off. That's better. Yeah, that, that's, that's much better. I think this is an appropriate shade actually. Now that I'm looking at it, it's alright. like the front of the tanks look a little bit you know meaner and again I'm gonna do the same with the, with the turrets there is a bit of a blockage period in my in my airbrush I'm gonna try and get all the airbrushing done as quickly as possible it could also be that I turn the compressor off too because I took my headset off it's really leaking it's it's not going it's going so I definitely need to get in there and sort that out. <laughs> it was the fact that I hadn't had it turned on. It wasn't there wasn't a leak in there. Okay, cool. Not a leak. I meant a uh, blockage. It's been a long day, right? Can I get a little bit of shadow? In there. Cool. I might be in danger of overdoing it, so I've really got to know when's enough, you know. So that that looks pretty good to me. Um, some comments going in. Do you have transfers for them? I have transfers for none of them. In fact, what you need to do, please, Easy8 community, is go on to Facebook and the comment section down here as well, and just badger me and remind me to get 50 millimeter decals for these things because they will look so much cooler. I mean just the simple addition of having a number on the side of the turret makes it look so much cooler but he is lacking the star right so he needs that one on there but just these tiny little details they go a long way to making these tanks they don't need anything more than just the icon um, or a little tank number or something like that so these probably could just benefit from having the star maybe a, a turret number the the german vehicles are probably like a last number on the turret and then the iron cross that that's that's all they need they don't need all the extra stuff at this scale but it does make them look it just finished them off and i need to do it and every week someone goes have you got the transfers for them and i go no i'm stupid so please my brain doesn't why this way <laughs> i have no working memory it's a curse right what i'm going to do now is i'm going to move over to the highlight colors just trying to purge the airbrush out there's ever so slight blockage in there that and it means that every now and again like a little bit of water comes out or something give it a little bit of a shake okay cool so i'm going to move on to some highlight colors i'm going to put the turrets just over here for a second and then i'm going to worry on just one turret uh, one hull at a time uh stuff says i've got plenty of german ones um I mean, I've got a few German vehicles, but because you have all the German vehicles, I've gone more for allies. Uh, cool. Right, let's um, look at the highlights. So, there are two main highlights here. I've got the light colour, the, the light base colour, but there's two highlight colours. There's olive drab highlights and there's olive drab shine. The shine colour, give them a bit of a shake. The shine colour really is a step above um, all those greens, and it's really good for. Um, <laughs> can't imagine what this is. Uh, it's really good for hitting like really tiny um, pinpoint details, like you know the top ends of antennas and things like that. 
for me anyway. Um, on these vehicles, I think that this is lost. So I'm actually not going to do any of that. All I'm going to do is this highlight here. Um, and this is enough. And I'm just going to just sparingly on the front ends of these tanks and, that, and the turrets. And that's all it is. And then the rest is washes and a little bit of dry brushing. Um, and the dry brush might be done with this colour. It might be done with the, with the, um, the, the light base colour that I started with. Staff says, but the Germans did use the Germans. They, 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 they did. Good tanks, weren't they? I think, I think they're cool, man. Sherman's brilliant. You can say it, Steph, if you want to. Wasomatic! <laughs> How is everyone getting on with all their painting this evening? We all, are we all doing well? Scallion TV still gluing 5P to the bottom of their 50mm bases. Kez, how are the uh, how are the mechs coming on? Are they doing all right? Just gonna wipe that nozzle down because there's a lot of paint on that one. Okay. Dad, what are you doing this evening? <laughs> That's because we shot holes in all their other tanks. <laughs> Staff says he's still building. See how how much lighter that colour is. That is the dark base that we're just playing around with. So the, the, the sort of dark base, that is the shadow colour. Um, I haven't actually closed that paint up. Please let me do this. Um, so that's almost the highest highlight and, the, and that is the darkest dark. So being very careful here now. I think I will highlight with this colour as well. Put just a tiny, tiny spray on the back there because that was such a bright colour that really did disappear into the darkness. So I just did this really, t really light and distant um, spray, and it did just kind of pull that colour back again. Highlight on that one there, but it's okay to have differences, isn't it? Okay, over to the turrets. I'm gonna get out the uh, uh, I'm gonna call them the John tweezers, the Takak tweezers. Yeah, I hope they find that offensive, John. <laughs> a little bit on the front of the cannon, and a little bit just on the front of the, uh, the turret there, and a little bit just on top of the, the hatch. Yeah, why not? I like that, it's cool. Fire them out of this place, brilliant. Uh, mine's going well, says Kez, brilliant. Dave asked, Staff, are you building the house you got a pause? Yep, working on the roof again. <laughs> yeah, it's tended to be quite a project, that, hasn't it? But yeah, not one to let it go, I suppose. Good for you. Um, Jeff says, clean the workshop. Took a long time. Customer turning up tomorrow to pick up his build for salute. Shh, top secret. Yes, yes it is. Um, it's looking mighty impressive. Very different from your usual stuff as well. Um, I'm not allowed to talk about it, obviously. If you do want to see what it is that Jeff at Purple Line Creations has been building, you need to go to Salute 50, which is something that... Uh, the easy eight community are doing this year if you fancy coming along with us or if you're already going along the salute you want to meet up with us it would be super cool some people are actually going to meet us up there uh, quite a few of us are going up by train together and we're gonna actually stay in a pub together have a meal and you know, you know some food and um uh you know have a few beers and stuff and then we're gonna go there <laughs> i'm a bit concerned about the uh, the the recent uh, underground strikes but you know we, we'll deal with that that's that's what we do right just well we just got we got to um so 
yeah, if you want to go to Salute 50, come along to Salute 50. It'll be great to see you. Um, the EZ community do get together quite quite a lot nowadays, and that's really, really cool. Uh, I love meeting all you guys and whatever. And, of course, if it's your first time meeting us, then do it somewhere safe, somewhere public. Tell us where to go, and we'll meet you there if you want to. Salute 50. Tickets are £12. Uh, tickets are still being sold. You can buy them, but I would get them now to avoid disappointment if you're considering it. Um, and it is on April the 21st. Or is it April the 22nd? No, I've said that. I can't. I'm double guessing myself. The guys here will tell you. It's, it's that Saturday, that weekend of April. Um, uh, 10 till 6, I believe. Head on over. It'd be cool. Wonderful. Scallion TV says, Painting is done in short bursts. Listening to random stuff on YouTube. Ah, thanks, mate. Have some more of my hot chocolate. Mm. Yum, yum, yum. The second, the 20 seconds. There we go, cool. I, I knew it was. I don't know why I said the other one. I, as soon as I said it, I was like, what am I doing? Cool. I'm going to put just a, a, another couple of drops of 50-50 um, cleaner in my airbrush there. And I'll, I'm just going to half purge. And I'll let that sit there for a minute because it helps sit there and cleans. I'm now going to do some washes, um, which is super cool. I'm going to put these colours away for a minute. Um, the highlight's gone quite bright, so I'm going to see what the washes do to it. Um, what I can do, if, if it is too light by the end of the washes, those highlights look a bit too much, I, I can come and use some transpirator, use one of those colours, uh, make a filter, and then kind of bring that original colour back down again. But um, I don't mind it as it is, so let's, let's see where we go. Um, let's pop these two tanks here. Let's stick a turret on this one. Oh, do you know what I did do? I did do highlights on the side of the wheels. Okay, cool. Back in. Let's get... <laughs> Let's clean the airbrush out of cleaner. That's feel, that feels weird. A little bit of highlight. Silly boy. One, two, three, four. That's more than enough. <laughs> the wonders of having an ADHD brain. Cool. Highlight color. Flow check. Brilliant. Pop you down. Okay, so earlier on, I had these facing up while I did a shadow. Now they're going to go down, and I'm just going to do just a, a light, a light dusting. Behave yourself. Cool. Now this way. Lovely. And do you know what? I don't even need to take the turrets off. Do I? I could just leave them like that. And now just facing down. Lovely. Now my feeling is, is that the um, that the washes will probably dull all the highlights and stuff down. Right, let's put some cleaner back in the airbrush. Yeah, everyone's saying the 22nd there. Yeah, it, it is the 22nd. It's going to be cool. It's going to be so busy, um, especially if we have to get a taxi there because that's going to be awkward with the underground um, on strike. Let's see. Let's see what happens. Um, but yeah, it's supposed to be really, really big. It's, it's the biggest one in Europe. I'm, I'm stoked to go. I've never been before. It is the 50th anniversary. Um, so I'm really excited. Uh, and there's a few of us in the Easy Eight community that go, and I say we're going to meet some other people there too. Um, and Jeff, my dad at Purple Lion Creations, is going to have his big build that he's been building for a customer for how many months now? For a for a long time now. But it's been top secret, and it's, it's got a big reveal on one of the big center tables there. Very exciting. Um, <laughs> Scanning TV says, "Am I the only one who goes through the salute traders list, making a route around the the hall so I don't miss something?" I've not thought of that. Um, but now you said that, I feel like I should probably hyper focus for the rest of the weekend. Thanks, cheers. Um, Jeff says the chaffy uh, only weighed 20 tons. The things you learn. 20, 20 tons is still heavy though, isn't it? But it looks like it should be more because obviously that's that's the Stuart, and and you can see that there is there is a sizable difference between the two. Um, don't know how much that must weigh similar, right? But yeah, it just looks like a big beefy tank for its age. I love it, it's great. I'm just gonna blow some air over the paint on the top there because that might get on the models in a minute. Now it's time for some washes. 
Now, I could use two washes here. Uh, my two brown go-to washes, Agrax Earthshade from Citadel or Citadel Seraph from Sepia. I love both of these. I use this one a lot for my Tyranids from the Warhammer collection because it's a nice warm colour. This is darker, it's a little bit cooler. And there are two recipes of this one because they've, they've, re, they've redone it recently and it's, it's still a nice colour. I think this colour will be better for these, but I, I don't know. I think I'm going to go with this one because this, as you can see, is quite a brighter colour and I, I want to keep it a bit more muted. So I'm going to go with Agrax. Give it a bit of a shake, why not? And um, I'm going to be careful with how I apply it, but not too careful. Like, I'm not going to do a sludge wash, um, but I, I, I want to I want to get it on liberally and then I can neaten it up. Well, you guys have seen me do it before. You know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to get my Rafael Kalinski at number two. Um, and I'm going to have my water on standby. I don't actually know what I've done with my um, paint palette. It's, it's around somewhere. I've, I've moved it. And I don't know where it is. Um, and I'm just going to get some water in my bristles. There we go. And I'm just going to start applying it on. I'm going to start on the front because that seems like a good place as any. Um, yeah. And I'm not. You can see that I'm, I'm kind of coating it everywhere liberally, but I'm not like getting my whole brushed sodden and then you know slapping all over and just kind of leaving it I, I do kind of want to like get it all over uh, but I go around with a like, wet brush and kind of move it around so it's a bit thinner um, looking at it now I think I'm glad I've chosen Agrax and, and not Seraphim um, the, the darker colour was, was the, the choicier choice <laughs> this is an unscripted show there's a lot of traders this year by the looks of things and salute to excellent. I'm going to spend the whole day with the team, the Easy 8 crew. Um, I'm just going to have a good old wander around and take a healthy amount of bank account with me and, and see if there's anything I want to buy. Cool. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this um, so that it just flows a bit freer and stuff. I really just wanted to pick, it, pick out all those details. I think I could have gone darker with the greens, you know, probably went a bit too, too light. Let's see where it goes. You can see that there's a difference between the two. Um, most of that is because of the enamels that I used and not the washes. Um, but actually, the, the, the hue green was quite close, so maybe I've chosen the right colour. The chaffy that's in the car park, or, or, or is, you know, um, at the Tank Museum in Bovington, um, is actually in British colours. So when I first saw it, I thought it was a British tank, but yeah, we, we, we had a few of them. So now just going around with a, uh, just a wet brush and I'm just using it to move some of the dollops around where I don't really want it to be dollopy. Dollopy. Um, move it around and I can use the capillary action of the brush as well to just you know, pick up unwanted bits. But I do want it sitting in all the, all the lines and all the creases, it's kind of why I'm doing it really. Sure, it's kind of getting some you know, definition around the rivets and things. That looks like it's doing pretty well. It looks like it's too heavy in some places. Just making sure that I'm mopping up, really. Um, okay, over to the second hole. I can move this one away. Go over there. 
けど I'm gonna see how the, the the brightness sits with me for a couple of days. I might come back in and like hit it with a little bit of transpirator. If I do that, there's a very big chance that I might have to you know do a little bit of touching up with this particular step that I'm doing now. But I'm I'm okay with that. I'm just gonna see you know how this colour sits in my brain. Um, one of the things that we all know that I struggle with is the perfection of colour accuracy. But the problem with the accuracy is there's not actually any kind of historical accuracy. It's just what's in my brain at the moment the painting and in my head they should be just a little bit darker although I do like them being light just for some reason I've gone into this thinking they should be a little bit darker it's difficult being in my head um, uh, 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 Jeff says there's a lot of traders yep we've read that one already Dave says might find some more dice yeah we've all got a lot of dice after the last trip out we went down to Plymouth didn't we um, you might even find some lucky ones they cost more but are worth the extra um, yeah I'm really looking forward to going. Um, I, I, I don't have any expectations. I'm not going with anything in mind. I'm not going there to buy something like particular. Um, I just like going to them. It's just, just fun, isn't it? And it's nice to put Easy 8 out there as well. I am hoping to have some merchandise to wear when we go out there. I've been talking about getting merchandise for a while. The, the, you know, the community isn't a massive community, so it's never been like a priority of mine to kind of get merchandise. It's not like I've got 14,000 viewers. Uh, you know, I wish. Um, but we do have, you know, uh, a heart of gold and a dedicated loyal fan base. Now, as small as it is, it is worth, you know, um, doing something with, I think, and, and, and a few of us have been talking about it for you know, a few weeks now. I am currently um, talking with a company to produce some merchandise, so uh, bear with me. Uh, we are also heading to the Tank Museum on the 25th of this month, so if you want to come along and join us there, uh, we've got annual tickets because we've been a couple of times. We just want to go again. Uh, you guys have asked, so um, we are organising it. If you want to go, unfortunately, the vehicle that we are all going up in together has been filled um, but that doesn't stop you of course from making your own way there and meeting us there it'll be great we can have lunch together it'll be a tank date um though fortunately the merchandise won't be ready for that visit um if i'm being realistic with myself and with you um, but i am desperately trying to uh, I'm, I'm pulling out all the stops basically to get the merchandise ready for salute because um well if, if that ain't a deadline nothing is right Out. Come in with a wet brush. Move all those dollops around. The reason I come in with a wet brush is it, it moves the paint around a lot easier. Um, it doesn't drag and leave marks. But also, is it? I'm depositing water on the model, so it's kind of flushing the colour out a bit more, um, and it bleeds into the other areas that where I might want it. And if it builds up too much in a certain area, then I can go in with a slightly drier brush, and I can pick that colour out my capillary action. What I might do in a minute is wait for this to dry. I might actually try like a little bit of black wash, uh, it, it, much, much lighter, and just see if that kind of adds anything to it. Um, what I would like to do is focus a bit more on the engine bays over here. So I'm just going to, you know, slap this down. But the problem with these washes is that they do go on quite um, uh, watery. <laughs> um, so it, they, they look like they're just water basically it doesn't, it doesn't have the, the right effect like I'm working with enamels here um, so yeah and I'm just going to add a bit more on the back here just to make it look a bit dark a bit grimy I could have gone heavier shadow to be honest I should have done didn't think I was going to <laughs> I'm just getting messages coming through now from other members of the community who probably aren't watching right now talking about um, going to um, talking to the tank museum so uh, 
<laughs> if you are watching right now, I, I will get back to you in just a moment uh, after the show because I don't want to be talking about um, you know details like that on, on the show um, because uh, there are individuals who are providing the travel. Um, we don't want to give addresses away or anything like that on air. Not that I don't trust you. I just don't trust you. other people man cool do you know what they're looking pretty good over there at the moment I'm liking those right so the turrets the turrets are going to be a bit trickier aren't they because I don't want to hold them by the cannon I want to hold them by the peg underneath so I'll use my tacac tweezers <laughs> uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. uh Jeff says, by the way, there is a real chaffy for sale in the States for $339,000. Or near offer. You said you wanted one. Yeah, I, actually, I really do. Um, couldn't lend us $339,000, could you? Plus travel. Export, sorry. <laughs> Dave says, still looking for the Soviet dice. I think they might have some at Bovington. Uh, I, do you know, I can't remember if they do or not. I mean, you can go on the um, Bovington... Uh, Tank Museum website. I can't remember actually. There might be a link to Bovington Tank Museum just down there in the description. Have a little look um, because you might be able to go check it out now because uh, they have quite a comprehensive shopping list um, on their online store. Um, so yeah, I mean, or you could just wait, I suppose. Um, for anybody wanting to know what Dave's talking about, we play a lot of um, Water Tanker um, and Dave likes to play Soviets. So um, yeah. Big guns. <laughs> T-34s, man. T-34s. Tough old tank. Um, some more comes going on. Give me merch. Uh, unlike you, Danny, I have a shopping list. Y yes. Um, don't get me wrong. Like, I, I want to have a shopping list. I love retail therapy and nerd stuff. Um, I I, it's not, I don't need anything. I just I just want it. Uh, and every now and again, I, I I allow myself to you know treat myself when I go away. And I suppose at that point is to not go away to too many shows. Um, I bought some really nice um, things down at Plymouth Amateur Wargaming Society down at Paul's. I call it Paul's, but it is Paul. I suppose P A W S. Um, no, it is P A W S. Wargaming Society. No, it is Paul's. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, um, and I bought some cool terrain boards down there and my product review this weekend was actually talking all about them and putting one together. They're fantastic. And I had a great chat with Matt from the Pit Gaming Store um, over in London. Um, and they're going to be at Salute 50, actually. So definitely worth going checking them out. Great terrain boards. Some of the guys in the community have been telling me that they're um, contemplating getting them already. Um, they're just brilliant you can make them really generic or you can put your terrain all over them if you want to like buildings or you know um you know rivers and ponds or hedges you can stick all down if you wanted to or just have it also a scatter terrain they're just really really cool anyway i digress um i i would buy loads of stuff but i have so much stuff around me that needs to be painted and um well the whole point of the show is to get through what you've already got so if i I'd feel a bit of a traitor to myself if I um, if I did that. I just went and bought loads of stuff. <laughs> but, you know, who doesn't want to buy all the stuff, right? Now, I'm holding this upside down because colour wants to run down with gravity. If I hold it down like this, it looks a little bit like grimy build-up in the right places. I'm just going off of what I do on my thirty on my you know one thirty fifth builds. I don't hold them upside down, but my grime is at the top of the turret. But of course I have to wait for it to dry. Which is a bit of a nightmare. It looks kinda cool. It's just trying to see it. Can you see how it's building up there? Is it can you see that? Oh, I, I like it.
I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit that with that. Just a little bit of fresh air from the old air airbrush. From a distance. Just to help the drying process there. This might take ages because there's a lot of water there. Um, yeah, I'd love to have a shopping list. <laughs> Uh, a list sounds expensive. Ironically, the list is to prevent me going off piste and avoid impulse purchases. Uh, I should have read ahead. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I I like surprises. <laughs> it's, that's the problem there, isn't it? Let's see how that works out. May the seventh in Exeter Legionary Show. Yeah, we went there last year. Was it last year? It was last year, wasn't it? Um, it was a small turnout, but it was actually a nice. A nice little event, and I, and I think I might head down there because it's um it's quite local to me. So um, if you want to head down there, then we could do a little day out again if you want to. That that would be nice. It was a nice father son day out that was. Okay. I don't know why I did that stupid voice. I'm really sorry. Um, are we going, Jeff? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Another easy eight calendar date these little chappies are looking really good now I've put this wash all over them it's kind of brought the color back out yeah I'm glad I chose this color and not the sepia um, these the, the, these color tanks are they're looking really warm now the colors are looking warm but if I use the sepia it probably would have gone too much um, but I still might put a little bit of black on them in some places just to kind of you know add a bit of depth to it um, you will notice, of course, that I'm doing a lot more on these than I was on the um, Churchill's last week. That's because I don't have a, um, a British green um, modulation set, so I couldn't do all the, the shadow and the highlights and things like that. Um, and and they, it just doesn't show up on them. I did all of this, so I, I did all of the uh, the washing on them, but the colour is quite dark, so it, it shows up differently. Uh, and they're because they're metal and resin they they weren't very fun to paint frankly um i'm glad i got them i bought them down at paul pause I keep calling it paul um i bought them down there because i wanted some churches for my for my british forces in water tanker um what i didn't think about at the time i, I just thought oh churchills i just picked them up i didn't realize i was getting gun carriers but gun carriers is cool i've got two of them now i only really needed one i suppose but i want some um, infantry tanks because um churchills were really quite common I believe and uh, I don't have very many British tanks uh, and I find myself playing a lot of British tanks or, or British games so I, I should have them I suppose I should get some Crusaders and Valentines and things and maybe even do them in desert colors that'd be kind of fun wouldn't it uh, Dave, Dave bought do you remember Dave you, you bought how, how many Matildas you bought a whole box of them, didn't you? And we do really mean a whole box of them. How many Matildas have you bought for your Soviet forces? really heavily and I just I don't want it to be too much the problem is if I pick it up it does tend to pick up all of it so I've got to be careful about how I use this capillary function if you want to call it a function if I want to pick out a colour if I want to remove it I've got to be careful about how I go in there there we go that's looking pretty good oopsie daisy that might have ruined everything okay cool just going to leave it there for a minute um, obviously I can't do much while they're all wet like this so I'm just going to take the moment to um, wash my brush out and then I'll just blast them with some air so from, air from the airbrush because it's softer than the hair dryer I can do it from a bit of distance I can change position quite easily, it's a smaller thing and then when they're sort of safe enough to pick up the hair by hand I can then hit them with the hair dryer and turn away cool let's do you need a bit of a clean out you will need one later but you're okay for now time for a hot chocolate a lot of talking this evening isn't it coming up to the end of the show unfortunately which is a bit of a shame because i'm having a bit of a blast today really um let's have a look at the comments that are going in 
sounds good. Yeah, wearing merch, obviously. Yeah, no, we'll have the merch by then. Um, could you crowdfund a chaffy? I feel that we should start that. But <laughs> it's going to happen. We're going to end up with a chaffy if we're not careful. What are we going to do with a chaffy? But I want a chaffy. We could paint it in easy eight colours. That would be amazing. But e easy eight chaffy so that we could go on an easy eight road trip in a chaffy. But I feel... I feel that we'd be doing a disservice if we got a Chaffee and not, an, not a Sherman E8. So if we're going to do that, that's what we do. And we pimp it out inside so that it's comfortable because, I don't know, they, they weren't made for leisure, were they? <laughs> what a great idea. It's a ridiculous idea, but it needs to happen. That's what, that's what we do when Easy 8 makes it big time, right? We tour all the different shows in, an, in a Sherman E8 pimped out inside for comfort. With a kettle, of course, because you need to brew up. Uh, Dave says nine. Nine Matildas. I've just got the one. That's Matilda 2s, for those people watching. Matilda 2s. I think they're fantastic. Because when I first found out about it, I didn't really like them. I didn't really know much about them. But the more I've come to know them, the more endearing I find them. They are absolutely fantastic little tanks. And they served from the beginning to the end of the Second World War. Um, and they were out outgunned in in Europe so they were taken over to uh, Tunisia North Africa basically um, where they performed with excellence um, and I believe that the Russians have them as well which is why Dave decided to buy them um, some for his Soviet forces so that, um, well so he could mix it up a little bit because T-34 is a bit too much sometimes but nine <laughs> we did say um, that I was going to I was going to split the pack with you if you didn't want so many but I assume you want all nine you go you man you go you anyway let's see if I can get a bit of air on these um, just from a distance I'm just going to if I put my arm down over here it stops the air from blowing everything off of my workbench what if I just knock it over just not doing my Agrax, but fortunately if the lid was up, that would have been disastrous. So just a little bit of airflow, just to... I can see it already, I can see them sort of drying. I know they're not really in the in the shot there, I'm really sorry about that. I can have a few of them. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not asking for them. You you, you bought them. I if, if nine is too many for you, uh, I will certainly lighten your load for you. But they're your tanks, man. Don't let me bully you into sending them to me. Um, I, I just think they're beautiful little tanks. I'm not a massive fan of the Matilda one. Um, I think it looks kind of cool. It's it's more fun for like um, sort of just driving around at a show, right? It it looks like it could go some. Um, but I don't think that as 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 a tank for tanking, I don't think that it's really all that good. But the Matilda 2 just looks like an honourable little tank. You know, it looks like it's got some character to it. I like it. Um, what's my favourite British tank? British May tank. Um, probably gonna have to go with the with the um, the Comet, I think, um, because it was the, the it was the answer to the Firefly problem. The problem being that um, we were getting Shermans on a Lend-Lease program and we could only fit out so many of them with the 17-pounder. So the idea was to let's make a tank that can carry a 17-pounder. I can't remember what the Comet... The Comet came from something. Also begins with a C. It wasn't the Crusader. Um, Anyway, there was there was one made, and they decided to stick a 17-pounder uh, in the turret, and it became the Comet, and I, I like it. I believe that they have one, in the, not in the main entrance in the Tank Museum at Bovington, but when you go into the museum, the first main corridor, there's one right in the doorway there. It's, it's, it's a nice little tank. Nice little tank. It's quite a big tank. Uh, Sherman for sale in Belgium for 300 grand. Oh, you're trading with me, Dave. Swap a few for Shermans. Um, okay, I'll have a little look through. What I need to do is I need to actually make like a little force, don't I? And go like, okay, I've got X amount of Shermans. I think actually I'm, I'm, I am I need the Shermans that I've got. So uh, let, let me have a little look and I'll see if I can make up a little trade list. It'll be like going back to school with basketball cards. Basketball cards, basket cards, basketball cards. Talking too fast again. Football cards in this country, isn't it? <laughs> Clearly, as you can tell, I didn't do trading cards. 
Not that I remember anyway. Dad, did I do trading cards when I was at school? <laughs> I do not remember. This is doing a good job in drying this. Fantastic. Again, like always, I will take a photo of this and I'll pop it on the Facebook page at ETH. Don't forget that you can head on over there, you can like and follow us over there. We've actually had a few new followers on Facebook as well, which is great. Dave's given me the symbol. The noise comes for free. Um, yeah. Oops. certainly added a bit of character to them. I really like them. I'm really sorry if this evening that the sound issues with the microphone earlier on the show have been uh, a real setback um, and if me kind of changing the position excuse me of the camera has been disturbing whatever and you can't really see what it is I'm working on. Um, yeah it feels a little bit substandard today. Uh, I have enjoyed painting all my models. Uh, these are looking really really cool and I'm gonna have them finished by next week which is really exciting and if you badger me I will buy those transfers those decals and I will have them put on here next week as well that'll be really cool right right that'll be awesome that'll be wicked looking really good I don't think I need to do the whole um, recovery of the colors that's actually now that I've done all of those well, you know, all, all of that washing and staining it's it's gone it's gone really really well I, I wonder if can you guys see them well enough on the camera looking really good still need to do the undersides and, and, and all the bogey systems on there but they are, but they are looking really really cool anyway let's uh <clears throat> we've got about five minutes left so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the turrets over there I'm going to take this guy and this guy pop them on the sides and it's time to get a sludge wash not really a sludge wash but I'm going to get a heavy wash in the bogey systems um, I'm not going to be on after the show tonight um, so if you were hoping to go and chat to me and the rest of the guys you can still go over there discord runs without my presence that is wonderful so if you want to go over there and have a catch up you can go in join in any of the um, the little chat rooms made for you me and us feel free go fill your boots um, I just won't be there you can go to the commander seat you can go to the gun seat you can go to the driver seat if you want to whatever you like um, I just won't be there this week I just need to go and see my partner for a bit I'm just gonna go chill out and watch some TV I haven't seen a lot of her and she's been supporting me stoically through easy eights life um, by waiting for me when I come home making sure that I'm fed before I go online and sending me on my way is if she's been she's been absolutely wonderful and it's just nice to go and say thanks and go and spend some time with her and sit on the sofa and watch some telly or whatever it is that we're gonna do so yeah she is also a subscriber so <laughs> there you go she is a subscriber to easy eight she's been a wonderful supporter of the show she always wants to know updates. She's not an, um, uh, a model nerd. She's into Doctor Who. She's into Harry Potter. Uh, so she's a nerd for those things, but not for the things that I nerd about. So she doesn't watch the show, but she um, always wants to know, you know, how many subscribers we've got, if there's been new subscribers, how the shows go. And yeah, she's, she's, been, she's been wonderful. And of course, on Friday evenings, she doesn't get to see me because often, uh, as soon as I'm done here, I'll head over to Discord for hours. Um, so from the moment I get home from work, she'll make me dinner and then I bugger off. Um, so yeah, how wonderful is that of me? So yeah, how lovely of her. Cool, that's that side done. Uh, <laughs> thanks Danny off for Bailey's cheers Stafford thanks for coming along man it's been lovely to have you with us this evening I hope your thumb feels better uh, Jeff says buy transfers from Skytrex damn it 
have sent you a Chaffee road test vid, by the way. <gasps> I need this. <laughs> it's all coming through on my phone. Brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much. Right, I'm going to need to put a bit of air on that, aren't I, before we finish here. Just nice and gently, from from a good old distance here, because it's really still quite watery. If I, if I come in too close or too harsh with the air, it just blows all the paint around. You can see them moving just, just gently under the air there. I really want to crowdfund the tank now. We're going to need more. We're going to need more than 85 subscribers. We're going to need to. We're going to need to get at, at least somewhere into the triple figures. I think we're going to need thousands, but it needs to happen. It needs to happen in my lifetime. I need this to happen. Got quite a tide mark on the side of that top tank there. I don't know if you can see that quite so well. Fortunately, it does look a little distracting, so I might try to tease that out. Oopsie Daisy. Come back, you. Here we go. I might try to tease it out with a little bit of cleaner and then just kind of reapply it. Oh my goodness sake. <laughs> stay, stay there. Just enough. I colour the stick a little bit so I can turn him around. Flip him up, do the other side. Flip him up around do the other side a little bit of a staining on that skirt but actually that looks quite okay I like that in the sprocket wheel in the road wheels nice big wheels as well so when it comes to doing tires not as fiddly one good thing about the Churchill no tires we found that out last week didn't we Oh my goodness, I just realized I'm using Seraphim Sepia. Hmm, okay. <laughs> I picked up the wrong pot. I just dropped it on the side of the uh, side scale. I was like, that's a different color. We don't want that here. Wow. I had to make a mistake at some point, I suppose, didn't I? Okay, cool. Dry brush. Pick out all the color. Pick out all the color. Do you know what I can do here? Where's my Agrax? What is that? There it is. Mix the pots up. What a plonker. Right. Cotton bud. Yep, that's doing it. That's doing it. That's picking the colour out. What a douchebag. It's okay. It's actually in quite a discreet area. Um, it's not like it's all over the tank, right? So, yeah. Let's get that in there. Maybe it'll add a different effect to the wheels to make them look muddy, perhaps, who knows. Okay, let's flip you over. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that. Let's get some water in there, wash it all down. Welcome to Easy 8, where I get things wrong. It happens every time. Trying to be careful and not rub the paint, especially while it's wet, I'll, I will end up taking the paint off. But I have done a pretty good job at saving that, so yeah, I'm pretty happy. And I can come in with Agrax, which is a much more dominant colour. And um, yeah, repair that damage. Can't believe I didn't spot that. What a plonker. Right. Okay. <laughs> with Agrax. Um, more comments. Uh, Adrian says, picks of tonight's progress up on Facebook. Brilliant. I'm really, really excited by the Angry One build. Angry One is such a cool character, and they've. Ju I, I don't know what you think, but I think they've really done him justice um, with that model. Um, I wasn't a massive fan of, of Gilliman. Um, I was a really big fan of the Forge World version. I think he had that um, Imperial statesman look to him. He looked like a Roman character. That's exactly what I think he should look like. 
I don't know it's all personal taste, but I preferred him. I don't mind the Citadel version of Gilliman, I just prefer the Forge World one. Uh, Mortarion was, was was good looking, but I'm just not really into that sort of a model. Um, Angron is, is, is just everything you think that he should look like. Really, really good. Um, and they haven't scrimped on the sculpt at all. And what I mean by that is, if you remember back to the the original um, model of the um, the Greater Demon, um, the Corn Greater Demon, Bloodthirster. Thank you. Um, the Bloodthirster is really cool, but the old model is a little bit old now, um, and they could have easily have gone down that road and made it look a little bit corny. Excuse the. Pun. <laughs> that was not a deliberate pun at all. Um, corn, the the blood god. Um, I, yeah, basically, I just think they've done him justice. It's a really, really good model. Um, I do like Magnus the Red. And people have been doing beautiful paintworks on him too. Okay, cool. I've, I've saved that disaster of a paint problem going on there. Um, and the last thing that I'm going to do here now, I think, is I'm just going to have a go see if I can just remove that little, um, I'm going to call it a coffee stain. Um, but just where the uh, the paint's built up, the wash is built up on the side of the, um, the skirt. I, if it was on a bigger scale, I would have left it because it looks like mud or whatever. But on here, it is actually just a little bit distracting. Um, so I'm just going to go in with a dry my brush out. Clean, of course put a little bit of airbrush cleaner in those bristles not a massive amount I don't want to saturate the area and cause any problems but I'm just gonna ever so gently just I'm just gonna let I'm gonna apply it to the top and you can see it reactivating already but it will flood that area and it will remove all of that wash all the way along there so I'll have a big clean line if I go too vigorous yeah I already have gone too vigorous just by just by touching if I go even more vigorous, I'll go through the green layers that I've painted. So the idea is just to reactivate that wash colour. Wash it out of my brush. And then I'll come in with a little bit of water and wash it all down. That'll move that reactivated paint around a little bit. And then I can come in with another wash and that is saved. achievement get just to finish off then I'm gonna pop a little bit of agrax just on that exposed area there just to make it look better now that looks a little bit dollopy that with a little bit of water and a little bit of opportunity to spread out that will mask that clear area really well you won't even notice finish up the show okay i'm going to come away from there um I, yeah i'm looking at the the angle of the camera you can't really see an awful lot on there i'm really sorry about that i will go back to my normal zoom etc for next week's show um so thanks for bearing with me this week when i've had a few issues with my tech today anyways come away from the workbench now shall we hi so um yeah i have really enjoyed myself this evening i feel like i've done so much more this week than what i was doing with the churchills um so yeah it, just easier to paint the plastic models i know some people are really into the resin resin's got its place some people are really really into the metal i, I don't really like metal but i do have them i've got here two char bees fully made of metal i just find them more difficult to paint and those churchills were just i don't know there was something about them i was, I was just getting i was struggling with them 
These ones, however, the, the olive drab colours are just, they're just wonderful colours, just beautiful little tanks, and the models are just absolutely fantastic. Um, I hope you guys have had a great evening painting whatever it is that you've been painting this evening. Um, <laughs> some comments going here, I've got to catch up here, what's, what's this? Uh, I sent you a chaffy road test, 21,000 each. <laughs> um... Staff says, Adrian, your painting looks brilliant. Well done. I'm really excited. I'm going to go and have a little look. As soon as this show is finished, it's going to be great. Uh, Scally TV, 21,000 for a set of transfers. That sounds a bit steep to me. No, the tank fund. Uh, thanks, staff. We'll see how well it looks under better lighting. Um, I'll have to get Magnus and G-Men out for a size comparison once Aragon is... Uh, Aragon? <laughs> Wow, franchise crossover. <laughs> I don't think he's going to survive. I, d I don't think he's going to make it. He's not going to pull through. But I would watch that film and read that book. <laughs> um, I'll have to get Magnus and G-Man out for a size comparison once Angron is finished. Uh, do, do you have um, Mortarian? I think I don't know if you have. I, I've never heard. Um, yes, cool. Dan, if you're swapping tanks, you have a KV-1 and a KV-2. I do have a KV-1 and a KV-2. That's absolutely correct. Those, those are things to think about, right, Dave? Uh, Scanning TV, Adrian, says, uh, Adrian, that's a nice, neat painting. Good stuff. All right, now, now I'm definitely intrigued. Anyway, look, I've had a brilliant evening. Thank you very much for your company. Sorry for the dodgy star and the dodgy tech this evening. Uh, but don't forget, if you do like what I try to do here on this show, uh, do please subscribe because it really helps me. Uh, it feeds my ego and it makes me feel good about myself. Um, and if you do subscribe, then it feeds the algorithm, which means that more people will find out about us. And that they're likely to subscribe and then it gets out of hand. And then the next time we log on, we can buy that chaffee. <laughs> yeah please do subscribe it really makes ev every little bit of difference hit the little bell icon in case i do something surprisey one day anyway look, i've had a brilliant evening thank you very much for coming along i will see you next week and in the meantime stay safe be kind keep on painting and i will see you soon nice show mate thanks very much see you later take care bye bye wait for it it's gonna it's i've i've, I've, I've still got a <laughs> There it is. Music still playing. Such an amateur. <laughs>